everybody. Welcome back to Pagan's Reading Nook. My name is Pagan. So first off, before we get really deep into the nitty gritty of today's episode, if I sound a little hoarse or a little frog-like, um, we're being affected by the Canadian smoke from the Canadian wildfires and uh, my lungs and my throat really don't like it. So uh, I almost debated not recording an episode, but I realized the smoke's not probably going anywhere anytime soon as long as the fires are still burning so here we are and we will get into it so let's kind of talk a little bit about may versus june may was kind of a shitty reading month for me i had this beautiful tbr that i wanted to dive into and then i got kind of hooked and sucked into books that were not on my tbr and then I ended up kind of falling into a place that we're going to talk about today, which is I realized I am a mood reader. And I talked a little bit about this in the last episode too, but uh, truthfully, the big thing about it is with being a mood reader, I never know what book is going to strike my fancy that day. For example, I started haunting Adeline two-ish weeks ago yeah like almost 10 days ago uh and I don't know I'm like maybe six percent of the way through the book I I haven't picked it back up since then am I still planning on reading it absolutely but I also realized that Haunting Adeline is one of those extremely dark books and my headspace right now is not really a place where I want to go super dark with something um does that mean that I don't enjoy it I absolutely am dying to get to know Zaid and to see if he lives up to the hype. Obviously, I think he's going to. But I'm not really ready for the anxiety roller coaster that's going to come with Zaid. So he's been backburnered for now. Um, I also have Fourth Wing that is on my TBR. I'm dying to read it. However, I'm also... I'm not ready for it to be over if that makes sense. <laughs> it's funny kind of saying that out loud because when it comes to like the fourth wing and books like the fourth wing, you want so badly to dive into that world, but you know you're going to be utterly destroyed when it's over because you have to leave until, you know, the next book comes out or the if the next book comes out, which we all know it is, it's coming out in November. I'm just not ready for that emotional turmoil yet. <laughs> so, I have been diving into some very happier kind of um quicker reads and we're going to talk all about those today but before we get really deep into that i have a super exciting announcement that i am just so thrilled for and that is y'all remember me talking about bonded by thorns and how obsessed with that book is and how it's become my favorite book of all time well yes that that is still very true and it has not removed from the number one spot and probably never will be but I'm super excited because book two comes out on June 13th. It is so exciting and I'm so ready for it. I pre-ordered it immediately after finishing book one. That is Woven by Gold. That is by Elizabeth Helen. And that's not all the exciting news. Like I'm excited for book two. Don't get me wrong. I am over the moon. Cannot wait. Want it to happen right this minute. But I kind of screamed and fangirled a little bit when I got the email. Elizabeth Helen, uh, the two beautiful authors who have written the uh, Beast of the Briar series, which is Woven by Gold and Bonded by Thorns, they are coming on the show. We're going to talk with them in July. I'm so excited for it. I literally immediately messaged my best friend and I was like, hey, you're never going to believe this, who has also read the book and was madly in love with it. I was like, you're never going to believe this they're coming on the show. I cannot believe this. Oh my God. They're coming on the show. And I totally fangirled and I like squealed and, you know, ran through the house like a, you know, crazy person. But I was so excited. <laughs> That's the one thing I love about doing these podcasts is when authors I admire and I love and that I cherish their work get to come on the show and I get to talk with them. It, I kind of get to have that fangirl moment. On Pagan's Witchy Corner, I had a fangirl moment with uh, Storm Fairy Wolf the first time he came on the show uh, because I'm in love with his work. And I think he's also a beautiful human and wonderful in every way. Um, but yeah, he he's one of those ones I fangirled about, too. 
Um, so, but Elizabeth Helen, I fangirled about them coming on the show. I am so excited about it. I'm so excited to talk about the books. I'm so excited to read book two. That will kick off kind of my TBR for June. Woven by Gold obviously doesn't come out to the middle of June, but it is already pre-ordered. It will download on my Kindle immediately as soon as it becomes available and launches and I cannot wait. I am so excited for this book. I have to know what happens with Rosalina and the four good Fae Princes and the bad one. I cannot wait for this. I'm obsessed with this and I really hope that the princes pull their heads out of their houses because they didn't in book one. Uh, spoiler alert. But uh, if you would like to know more, please go read Bonded by Thorns. You will know exactly what I'm talking about. And by the end of the book, you will be screaming, what the fuck? Because that was me the whole time. <laughs> it's such a good book and I'm so excited for it. And I cannot wait to see what happens in Woven by Gold. I was also pleasantly thrilled to find out that this is a series of three books Books, not two. I thought it was two, but it is actually a series of three books. The last one, Forged by Malice, that is the third book, and that comes out. Uh, release date is winter of 2023, but it does say that it would be auto delivered to my Kindle on May 24th, uh, 2024. So we will just kind of keep an eye out for that one. I'm excited for it. I know it's going to be an amazing book because book one was amazing. I'm very sure that book two is going to be equally as amazing. And, oh, I have to know what happens to all of them. And it's going to be so, so good. Absolutely one of the best books I've ever read. And I will forever say that. So that is obviously on my TBR, but that is for my TBR later this month. What I have been obsessed with since May, and that is the Carolina Comets series. It is a set of hockey romance books. Yes, I'm in my hockey girl era. And I kind of blame a uh, Emily Rath, the author of Pucking Around, because I follow her on uh, TikTok. And she has shared all of these hockey teams. And some of them are just delicious to look at. So I, you know, was just like, oh, they're yummy. They're yummy. They're yum. I need to read all these books. And then immediately after that, I started seeing book after book after book after book after book for hockey romance. And there's probably 60 hockey romances in my to be read list on Amazon. And I will be honest, outside of the series, I wasn't really sure where to begin because there's so many and they all sound delightful and wonderful. And some are a little dark. Some are cute and sweet. Others are incredibly dirty. So Carolina Comments, uh, the series is by Tegan Hunter. There are seven books in the series. I have read three so far. I'm on book four. It starts with Puck Shy, and each book, by the way, is its own individual story. They're all just in the same world, and the characters kind of, um, some of their stories overlap, but you don't need to read. You can read them out of order. I don't recommend reading them out of order because you might be confused at who some of the other characters are, but you can. But truthfully, I would recommend reading them in order. And they're all so good. So, so good. They are sweet romances. Uh, they do have some spice in them. I would say I'd give the spice in them about a 3.5. It is not um, overly spicy. It is good. And it is excellent spice, but it is not integral part of the story. The story itself takes place about the romance and the relationship. The books are funny. Oh my gosh, the banter between the characters is so good. And each one is has its own individual spin and its own different tropes, but it's all still set within the same world of hockey and the same team. Puck Shy is the first one. So good. Oh my god, was it so good. Uh, the only downside is so far I've noticed there is either a third act breakup or a third act miscommunication, which isn't a deal breaker for me, but it is kind of one of those things where I'm not super in love with it. But at the same time, I will just kind of quickly read through that section to get to the, you know, happily ever after. All the books so far are happily ever after. The the chase, the build up, the romance, all of it is just exquisite. So far, my favorite is probably Blind Past. And it's kind of, it's not a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but it has Beauty and the Beast themes. It's just so good. 
it's so good. It's probably the best one so far. I have not found one that I haven't loved, but so far Blind Pass, which is book two, is my all-time favorite so far. And like I said, I love each and every one of these. And the next one is that I'm about to read is called Sinbin. Uh, let me backtrack a little bit though. Book one, Puck Shy. Book two, Blind Pass. Book three, One Timer. Uh, and book four is Sin Bin. Book five is Scorn Chance. Book six is Glove Save. And book seven is Neutral Zone. Sin Bin is the next one that I'm about to read. It's a kind of forbidden romance. They're not supposed to date. Uh, there's some age gap kind of stuff happening. Very, very good book so far. Um, I'm only about 5% of the way into the book, but I love Tegan's books. I love her writing style. Uh, this woman could write the damn phone book and I would read it at this point because it's so good. <laughs> I highly, highly, highly recommend this series. I would recommend these books kind of almost as like a palate cleanser if you're used to reading like dark romance, like um, Hooked, uh, Twisted, uh, Scarred, anything by... <laughs> Uh, Emily McIntyre, Haunting Adeline, uh, pretty much any of those. If you need like a good palate cleanser that's cute and has hockey in it, this is your series. Highly, highly recommend. I'm in love with it. And so yeah, the TBR is the rest of the series, the next like, you know, four books. Um, that is part of my uh, TBR. I'm going to finish this book series by the end of June because I think about this book series all the time and all I want to do is sit down and read it even though I have so many other obligations that I have to. This is also one of those book series that is so good that I do plan on buying all the paperbacks because they do. she does have special edition paperbacks. And I do plan on buying all the paperbacks to go with it because I love this series and it will be a series I will reread over and over again. It's so, so good. I'm in love and will continue to be in love. So, um, Anybody who is interested, Tegan Hunter, she has lots of other series. This is, I, which I plan to read, but the series is probably top tier best. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. The next series that I am also madly in love with is the Team Zulu series by Julie Weaver. She does have a prequel to this series. Um, it's a little Team Zulu no novella. It's called The Rescue. Such a great little book. It's only 72 pages, but it... it all of her stuff is also great. It is funny. It is spicy. It has that kind of like protector kind of vibes with all of it. It's such a good series. And interestingly enough, I have a friend who is a firearms instructor and said that the firearms um, terminology and usage within the books actually is like top tier. So Julie did her research. But Team Zulu is all the ex-military men of Team Zulu uh, that don't always abide by the law and they do whatever it takes to protect the women who capture their battle-scarred hearts. It's so good. I've read the first book and loved it. I've started the second book, haven't finished it yet. Um, the first book is called The Hit and the second book is called The Payback and the third book is called The Heist and obviously the uh, prequel novella is The Rescue. And so these books are fantastic. They're so good that my husband read them and loved them. My husband, I bought him a Kindle for Father's Day because he was dropping some not so subtle hints about wanting a Kindle because his other Kindle wore out, eventually got to the point where it was so old that Amazon wasn't sending software updates for it and it just kind of bricked itself, uh, which does happen with some of the older Kindles. But so I bought him a new one for Father's Day as an early Father's Day present. I can't get the man to put down his Kindle for hardly anything <laughs> at all. He has burned through so many books. And we're going to talk about some of the other books that he recommended that is also on my TV read uh, for this month. But I told him, I was like, hey, you should read the hit. I think you would really like it. It's, you know, obviously a romance book, but I think you would like it. He had devoured the series in two days. Two days. The whole book series. Loved it he would sit there and he goes, oh my gosh, this book series is so good. And we just talk about it. And then, you know, we'd laugh about it and we would, you know, kind of flirt over the cute, sexy scenes and all that. Also find a gamer husband who likes to read. And yeah, he also <laughs> would like me to recommend on the show that anybody who's married husbands, you really should read the books that your wives are reading because, uh, yeah, use your imagination right there. <laughs> he actually told this to somebody in Books a Million. Like there was a woman who was shopping in all the, you know, naughty book talk books. 
and the husband was kind of standing there and looking slightly annoyed and he was like no dude seriously read the book she reads trust me you'll thank me for it later <laughs> tells this to a total stranger which was hilarious um but yeah he he's reading lots and lots of books and it's funny because now he's going through other romance books too that you know i'm like hey this one and there's this one that we recommend and there's that one that's been recommended and there's this one and he's like, I have been missing out with these romance books. I had no idea they were this good. And I'm like, what? You just thought they were for housewives? No, no. Read all the books. Read them. So he read uh, the Zulu series. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I have recommended it to lots of people. Everyone seems to love it as soon as they start it because it's funny. It's good. It's action packed. It's pretty much everything you can need. And it has those sexy protector vibes that we all love and you know all the different tropes from like one bed to you know forced proximity whatever you want to call it there's so many different things that are just so 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 good uh julie weaver does a fantastic job with these books i highly recommend them lastly on my tbr list is a book series that my husband recommends he actually found the book series and started it and he started to kind of tell me about it and i got to the point where i'm like He's like, I'll just return the books on Kindle Unlimited when I'm done. I'm like, the hell you will leave them there so I can read them. <laughs> so this is the Norcross Security book series. There's nine books in the series. It's by Anna Hackett. Um, and it says, join Vander Norcross, the former military men of Norcross Security, as they rescue, save, and protect the women they claim as theirs. Action-packed contemporary romances in the series can be standalone stories. So the first one that is on my TBR for this month is called The Investigator. And it's, my husband says it's fantastic. It is a really, really, really good book. I cannot wait to read it. And I'm just, oh, I think I'm just kind of in a mood vibe for, you know, these good protective men that are also sweet and sexy and all these things. And all the books this time around really do have those protective vibes and those, you know, want to keep her safe, want to make her happy, want to, you know, do everything in their power just to see happy in whatever world she's in. And you really do see this in, you know, the Carolina Commons books as well, because, you know, obviously most of these guys are like, I'm not looking for love. It's all about hockey. And then they're just like, oh, you're the girl that I'm supposed to love and I'm head over heels for you. What happened? And it's so adorable. And there's, oh my God, you guys don't even understand. I have laughed so hard at some of those books because the banter was so good that it reminded me of me and my husband because we have one of those kind of bantery relationships and just, oh, such just exquisite writing, exquisite writing. I highly, highly recommend all of these books. These are the books that I'm reading for June. Am I going to get through them all? I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Halfway through June, my mood may completely change and I may go back to Haunting Adeline. I have no idea. But I have noticed that when it comes to TBRs, I like the term that I saw on TikTok, which was called a working TBR or even a tentative TBR. Because I think as book readers, we don't have to have our TBR st set in stone. And I will be honest, my, my TBR list on Amazon has probably 250 books in it. And I probably add five more every time I get on freaking book talk because there's so many good books out there that it's like, I don't have enough hours in my day to read them all. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop adding them to the wish list. <laughs> Honestly, without my Kindle Unlimited subscription, the books would make me go broke. <laughs> so can all limited. Yes, I know that um, anybody who is a subscriber or is wanting to be a subscriber, they did just raise their price from $9.99 a month to $11.99 a month. I don't know what the yearly price is. I don't pay for the yearly. I pay for it monthly. Um, but I do know that it is absolutely worth it. It's worth it for my household because my daughter has her own Kindle. My husband has one and I have one. And between the three of us, we all use the same Kindle Unlimited account um, because it's all tied to our Prime account. And that makes it to where we can all are able to read books without, you know, completely breaking the bank account. It's also great, though, because if you find a book that, let's say a book that's just terrible, like it's really trash and you don't want to read it, 
like you get halfway through the book and you're just like, I can't stand it. And you DNF the book. When you get to that point, then you just return it. It's almost like having a library that, you know, you technically pay for, but it's also great because then you haven't actually purchased the book and you're not stuck with it. Um, I had, did do that with, once with Audible. I, I downloaded a book that I was thinking that I was going to be totally enamored by and in love with it. And the book was horrible. It was horrible. The narrator was horrible. The writing was terrible. Um, I don't usually rag on books and all that, but this one was like one of the worst I've ever read. And it was just terrible. And I finally went to Audible's, you know, tech support and I was like, hey, I despise this book. Can I can I return it, please? Or a different book that I'd like. And Audible, I will admit, Audible was so kind about it that they were like, yes, if you are not happy with the purchase, yeah, you can return it. And here's a list of recommendations. What do you like to read? What is your usual genre? And they gave me a list of like five or six books that were on Audible that they're like, hey, I think you would really like this. Now, some of the books they recommended were books I would not read, but points for effort. They were at least kind enough to try. And I do appreciate that. I appreciate that they were still kind enough to try to, you know, do that. And so it was really kind of worth it. And I, I really like that. And I do know that all of the Carolina Comments books are on all but the last two are on Audible. So if you're an audiobook listener, they are on Audible. I don't know how they sound on Audible. I have not listened to them. I cannot tell you. I don't know. I'm presuming they're fairly good. The uh, Norcross Security books, I know that at least the first one is also on Audible. You'll have to check to see about the rest, but I do know that the first one is on Audible. However, the Team Zulu series is not on Audible, so I do apologize about that. And then finally, Bonded by Thorns, I know is on Audible. I do not know if Woven by Gold will be on Audible right away. But I do know that currently it is on Kindle and paperback. It does not show any other forms for Woven by Gold as of yet, uh, but that may be coming later. I will definitely ask the author about that and let you guys know as soon as I know, and we will go from there. But this is my TBR. These are the books that I've been reading. These are the books that I'm in love with so far. And what are you guys reading? Like, what what would you recommend if you could recommend one book for me? to look into reading for July, what would you recommend? I mean, I think you guys kind of know what I'm into, hopefully by now. So what would you, what would you recommend? What is your top read for June? Um, or even, you know, from last month that you would recommend that I check out for July and I will be back next week, hopefully, and keep you all updated on all the books I'm in love with. Enjoy whatever era of books you're enjoying, whether it be your hockey era, whether it be your protector era, whether it be your dark romance era, whatever it may be, enjoy your era and enjoy it well. I will talk to you all very soon. Bye-bye.